Ryan from the history of Rama. I mentioned to Congresswoman Rice, we've had other politicians come in before, Chuck Schumer, Senator Schumer, and uh, Hillary Clinton, and I gotta tell you, I'm very impressed with Ms. Rice for two reasons. Number one, honesty and integrity. I had the opportunity to meet her on a number of occasions, uh, most recently in her office in um, Long Island after she decided to vote against the you know, deal with Iran. And that showed me she's an independent thinker, something that we certainly got over here, thinking and deciding for yourself, despite the tremendous pressures that she certainly must have been under at the time, being a first-time congresswoman. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure that the administration and others placed upon you to vote the way that all the other Democrats voted, and yet you came out early and very passionately uh, speaking out against the deal with Iran. She has shown herself to be a true friend of the Jewish people and uh, Israel in particular, and very, very, very responsive to the needs of the community, and that's something that is also very, very important to us. And I think the last thing that impressed me, something that you've mentioned at uh, Phil Rosen's house and at the meeting in, in, in your office was, I don't need this job. I can get a job somewhere else. Meaning I'm not a career politician. As a result, I don't have to give in to the uh, pressures of the office. I'm going to do what I think is right. I think that's very, very important for us to have a uh, individual that really represents the community. And I'd like to offer you that when you decide to retire, we have a job teaching American history in school. So we'll get to it. So without any further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Congresswoman Kathleen. Very kind words. Uh, so, wow, women are slightly outnumbered here, huh, Rabbi? I see. So you're an impressive group of young men, I'll tell you that. Uh, and you are our future. And I'm just thrilled to see all of you here. And I'm even more thrilled to see that whether you are here because you have to be or because you want to be, you're going to hear from someone who's going to tell you what's going on in Washington and why it's so important for you to remain as active uh, activist as you are. Um, you know, when you look at what defines the success of any given school, and it really is teamwork. It's the administrators, right? It's the teachers, it's the parents, it's the students. You all deserve uh, amazing recognition for how what a great school uh, you are in. We all know um, that it's more than just your rigorous curriculum, which I'm sure that is pretty tough. You probably have hours and hours of homework every night, which is good because it keeps you off the computer, which can only mean trouble. Mark my words, okay? Right? Who agrees with me there? Yeah, the All right, there you go. I see some teachers in the back. Yes. Um, but Rambam is such a, is so special because it has a long history of playing an active role in its community and teaching its students to care for each other and for those who are less fortunate. Now, I grew up in uh, a family of 10 kids. I'm one of 10 kids. So I'm either Irish Catholic or Orthodox Jew, Rabbi. There we are. But very similar to the families that you are, I know, I, I probably look more Irish, you think? Maybe with the red hair, although there's a redhead right there. All right. Yeah. Okay. Now, like all, all right, everyone, calm down. There we go. Now, like all of you, my parents instilled in me uh, the desire to want to give back to the community that had given me and my brothers and sisters so much. Now, you guys all know that when the tsunami struck Southeast Asia in 2004, well, you guys were very, very little back then. Gosh, that was 11 years ago. It killed more than a quarter of a million people. Students from this school stepped up to raise money to help rebuild schools in Sri Lanka. That's what this school is about. You valued your education so much, you felt so fortunate to be a part of this school community that you wanted to ensure that kids in other places in the world had that same opportunity. And this school should be applauded for that work. Last year when Jewish worshipers, some of them Americans, were killed in a terrorist attack in Jerusalem, Students from this school, some of you may be sitting right here in this room, once again stepped up and helped raise $2.4 million for the victims' families. That is something that you should be incredibly proud of. These are extraordinary acts of kindness, compassion, and selflessness 
These are all characteristics of a strong moral character. Okay, very, very important that you're learning that. And then not just that you're talking about it, but you're actually backing up those words with actions. Now, this school is teaching its students to be better members of the community, better citizens of the world, and I am very grateful for everything that you are doing. I am honored today to be here to present you with a statement I submitted to the official congressional record congratulating you on receiving this prestigious award, highlighting the outstanding work that you are doing both in and out of the classroom, and expressing how proud I am to be able to serve as your congresswoman. Now, over the last year, who's been to Israel in the last year? All right. I've been there three times. Do I beat everyone in this room? Who do I not beat? Who's been there? Oh, darn it. I tried. Well, I'm going to be going back soon. Every chance, let me tell you, the first time I went to Israel was when I was in law school. And I went to Toro Law School, and we did a bar, uh, we did a um, exchange program with bar Lawn University. And it was the first time I had ever been there. And this was, gosh, Rabbi, almost 25, probably 25 years ago. Long, long time. Don't try to figure out how, I'll just tell you how old I am. I'm 50 years old. I'm a fossil. So it was about 25 years ago. I know, you're looking at me like you've never seen anyone my age. Yeah, this is what 50 looks like, kids, okay? Um, 25 years ago, amazing. I went uh, during the war last summer. I went back in May, and then I was there in August. And what I think is so important, and I talk a lot about, whenever I come back home here, is how important it is for every single American to understand how Israel, where it is situated in the world, how it is surrounded by enemies who want to see its destruction, and how important it is for us as a country to completely support Israel and defend Israel. A lot of people don't have that perspective. All of you kids who have been there, you know exactly where Israel sits, and when, if you go to the border of Lebanon or Syria, you see how easy it is to launch an attack on the Israeli people. And when I met um, Rabbi Billet's grandson, and he proudly told, he said, Saba, or he, Saba asked him, how long did it take for you to get to the safe room in your house? I can get there in 30 seconds. And I thought, that's really cute, but how sad. And to American kids who are his age, and he was about five at the time, do they understand what it's like to every day worry about being attacked just because who you are? And I don't think enough Americans appreciate that. And so I want to help start this campaign, if you will, to help educate Americans, encourage them to travel abroad so that they can have a bigger world view of how important it is for us to stick with our number one ally in the world, and that is Israel. So. Uh, I'm going to continue to go there as often as I am asked to go there, uh, and even when I'm not asked to go there, I will, I will uh, be there. But I want to point out, and this is something that I'm sure that you kids know in this room, that sadly it is not just in the Middle East where the Jewish people face the threat of terror. The attack, there was the attack in Paris just this past January, right? Uh, it was a tragic and chilling reminder that anti-Semitism is a very real threat in the West and that communities in Europe and even in the United States still remain vulnerable. Still remain vulnerable. And that's why uh, immediately following the attacks that existed, that, that happened in Paris, I was in communication with local law enforcement uh, and members of this of my district, this congressional district's Jewish community, and just to ensure that the appropriate measures were being taken to enhance the security in the five towns, right? Protect our schools, our grocery stores, our business districts, and provide residents with a sense of safety that every single person living in this county deserves to have. Now, in light of the attacks, I also work to help two Jewish community organizations in our district secure federal funding for critical security enhancements in their facilities. So um, there was a congregation in Woodbear, the, I pronounced it, A-I-S-H, Aish? Aish, Aish Kodesh in Woodbear, and the Chabad Center 
for Jewish Life and Merit, they each received $75,000 in funding through the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to help support a critical need at both these organizations for security enhancement uh, and whatever they needed to make sure that their locations were as safe as possible. Now, these grants, I, I'm on the Homeland Security Committee, these grants have helped provide thousands of organizations and communities across the country with the safety they need and the peace of mind that they deserve. And I'm glad that our district has benefited from that program. Now, uh, the rabbi mentioned the vote that I took on the Iran deal, and if I had to take that vote a hundred times until the day I die, the vote is going to be the same. I fear, I wish that I will be proven wrong, I hope, but I fear that history will prove that my vote was the right vote. It took only a matter of weeks after signing that agreement that Iran then fired off the first ICBM with absolutely no uh, ramifications whatsoever. So I signed along with two uh, in a bipartisan letter that called for a committee to be set up to monitor the implementation of the agreement with Iran, right? Because we know they're going to cheat. We know if there's one thing we know about Iran, it's that they cheat, right? And they might not cheat really big, that, which is the only kind of cheating that will snap back the sanctions. And even then, it's going to be hard to snap them back because Russia and China are not going to be with us on that. But what about the tiny cheating that they're going to do, right? Your parents tell you to come home at 12 o'clock at night. You say, you know what, I'm going to push it. I'm going to come home at 12.15 and see if I get in trouble, right? You, know, you might get grounded. They might just say, yeah, it's 15 minutes. We're not going to do anything, right? But it's important that you know that if you break the rules, there are going to be consequences. And this agreement does not allow for any consequence in the event of a minor breach, which is one of the reasons why I could not support it because we know that that's going to happen. Now, I came out early because I felt it was important. And, and that's not to say that I didn't read the agreement. I read the agreement. I read all the secret papers in the special room that you have to go to with no one else present. I listened to Secretary Kerry talk about what they negotiated. I talked to Sec Treasury Secretary Jack Lew. We heard from Ernie Muniz, who's the number one nuclear physicist, I think, on the planet. And he was helping to negotiate the deal and I knew, after digesting all of that information and speaking to constituents here in this district and understanding the geopolitical ramifications of this agreement, that this was an agreement that I could not support. And I felt it was incumbent upon me to do that quickly and let people know that this is where I stood. And I'm glad that I came out early because I think it was important for people to not make a knee-jerk reaction, yes, I support it, no, I don't, but be thoughtful about it. Now, I went against the administration in this instance, but that's okay, because as the rabbi said, I don't want to be in leadership, right? There are some people here in New York who want to be in leadership. I've got, bless you. Gesundheit. Uh, there are some people who, did I say that right? All right, All right. Good. thank you. There are some people in Washington who want to be in leadership. And when you want to be in leadership, you have to toe the party line. And the party line in this instance was, President Obama wants this deal to pass, so if you want to tow the party line, you have to be a yes on this deal. I don't want to be a leader. I just want to take the right votes, the votes that I know are right for our constituents and for our country. And that, my young friends here, that is leadership, okay? You're going to have to make very tough decisions in your life. And you're going to have to do it for the right reasons. Sometimes you're going to say, wow, it would really be better for me personally if I went down this path but I think the right path is for me to go down here. And you have to have the courage of your convictions to do it and to stay the course. And to have confidence that you have received the kind of upbringing and education that will allow you to make those kind of decisions that are fraught with upsides and downsides and stand by those decisions. Always keep an open mind, always have a conversation, always try to come to a meeting of the minds with people you disagree with, but at the end of the day, you have to make the decision that you think is right for you. And I believe that you, at this school, you are getting the kind of education that you need to be able to be leaders in our community going forward. Because that's what we need more of, right? If you look at, I'm sure you're paying attention, and by Wednesday night, who's planning on watching the debate, presidential debate? I better see every hand in this room go up. Every hand, all right. Come on, get, 
Yeah, you put your hand up there in the purple shirt with the broken finger. Yep. There you go. <laughs> There you go. You're going to be watching it on Wednesday night. I'm on a full report on Thursday. Why is it important for you to watch the presidential debate? None of you can vote yet. No, no one in this room is 18, right? Right? Next election. It's important for... Well, you're 18. I know you're 18. By, by some... A few years, I'll say. A few years. Look... This is why it's important, because in a few short years, every single one of you is going to be given one of the greatest rights any American can be given, and that is the right to vote. And you better exercise it. You better run down on your 18th birthday, register to vote, and exercise that vote. Don't, don't just register and then forget about it and never vote. And the reason why it's important for you to watch these presidential elections is because they're talking about things like Iran. They're talking about Putin and what Russia is doing with Ukraine. They're talking about domestic economic policy here that's going to either help us recover from 2008, which we still have not done, or go down a uh, not as uh, prosperous path. Now, by the way, let me also say, what's your, what's your name? Jonathan, you're going to find it to be entertaining because Donald Trump's going to be on the stage. and He's pretty entertaining, right? He says some crazy, wacky things, and he makes it kind of fun. So you're going to enjoy it, Jonathan. Don't worry. Get a bowl of popcorn and... Enjoy the show, but I want you to pay attention because one of these people, okay? Oh, well, the Met game, that's right. Oh, darn. All right, I might, I might have to give you a pass on this one. All right, how about this? How about this? I call it every time there's a commercial on the baseball game, you have to flip it to the, to the debate. Is that a deal? Jonathan just made a deal with me. Good. Go Mets, everyone wants the Mets to win. But listen, you guys need to know, because the next time, four years from now, who's going to be 18 in this room? Four years from now. I better be every hand. I won't leave you. Alright, simmer down, simmer down, simmer down. So the majority of you kids in this room, four years from now, are going to be 18 are going to be able to vote. It's going to be a totally different set of candidates. One of these people might be running for re-election if they decide to, but one of these people who's running out of the 20 people who are running is going to be the next leader of the free world. And you better know what they stand for and what they're about because you're going to have an opportunity to vote for that person very likely four years from now if they win in 2016 and run again in 2020. So very, very important. Um, I want you kids to stay as engaged as you are. It's very easy in life to complain about circumstances and complain and complain and complain and expect something to be done about it when you're just sitting at home doing you know playing your video games right if you're going to complain about a situation you have an obligation to do something to change the situation or else you have to keep your mouth shut okay and no one none of these kids especially you Jim, you're keeping your mouth shut now but I don't think you're one of those timid kids you have to allow your voice to be heard Okay, because every little, every kid in this room has the ability to be a leader. And this world is starving for leaders. People who are not afraid to take that first step, even though it may be bad for you politically or in some other way, and have other people, right, the majority of people are followers, follow after you. I know those are the values that you're learning, not only at home, but in this great school. Rabbi, I want to thank you so much. And it's my honor to give you this proclamation from the U.S. House of Representatives. Thank you very much.